What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Vaja Taco Tours. I have a disaster in an engine to show you. This is exactly what you think it is. That is sand. Virgin River sand from Utah. And how did it get into this 350 XCF engine? Got it in both sides. It got in and it got into the camshaft bosses here on the cylinder head ground up and chewed up into all that as well so how does this get into that engine uh, when I first heard about this situation I was absolutely positive that this bike must have fallen over so this is essentially the same bike this is a 23 450 XCF so this is a, a motocross engine just like this one here and let me show you the, the, the vent. So this hose that goes into the top of the head runs down. And if you have one of these motocross bikes, you know that this is the crankcase vent hose. So this is taking blow by that builds up inside of the crankcase and pulls it out and then dumps it out here down in between the swing arm in that fashion. So this is how they all do it. And that's this little port here on the cylinder head. You've got that hole there and then there is a little area here that's protected from oil vapors on this on the 350 engine there is a little plastic chamber that goes down and acts as a bit of an oil separator a vapor separator and it's just trying to capture any of the the blow by gases the positive crankcase gases and send them out of the engine you don't want positive pressure building up inside of the engine and so when this first happened i thought my theory was that this bike must have fallen over and had laid in the river and water flowing in this direction had just been caught here and guys will swamp bikes water will get inside of the intake it'll come up that hose if you completely swamp a bike fully submerge it water's going to get in that engine there's absolutely nothing you can really do to prevent it and that was exactly what i thought and he was super insistent that the bike had not fallen over it had never the bars had never touched the ground and yet here is the evidence that sand, that water, somehow got into this engine. So after doing a lot of snooping, talking to a bunch of people, and really trying to get to the bottom of this, it has now been discovered that under certain conditions, it is possible to create enough vacuum on a hot restart situation to draw water up into the bottom of that hose, suck it up, and then pull it into that engine. And that is exactly what's been confirmed and verified through multiple sources, multiple technical sources inside and outside of KTM. And that's what took this engine out. So let me give you uh, a, a bit of advice. If you're ever in a water, water, you're in water. Here was, here was the scenario. And I verified with, with this with the owner. And it's pretty much confirmed that this is how this, this went down. Uh, bike was hot, running hot. I think he was trail riding and doing some single track riding and so had a lot of heat built up in the engine. Not exactly sure if it had a cooling fan on it. None of these XCF and SXF motocross bikes have cooling fans and so it's very common for these things to be ridden outside of their design element and to get hot. You get in a water crossing and stall it out and then on the restart sometimes they can be difficult when they're really hot to restart and so there's a lot of cranking and that hot crankcase with the cold water and the restart will and can create enough vacuum like we've discovered to pull up water through that hose down here on the bottom and it's a journey look how far it's got to go up to get into there into the engine and once that happens then you're drawing water into the engine so there are two ways that you can prevent this scenario from happening to you in a worst case scenario it's sandy water in a best case scenario it's just water but you don't want either one of those so scenario one is get this bike in a hot start re hot restart situation do not do it in the water do not restart this bike in the water you are going to want to either and there's a couple of ways uh, that you could potentially deal with this you could just get the bike out of the water and start it in dry air. Another option that you might have is you could take this hose and it's just loose in here and you could take that and pull it out and do whatever you needed to do 
to get this up and above and out of the water. And uh, there is a suggestion that, I, that was given to me by uh, one of the engineers I spoke to about this, and it was if you were gonna be riding one of these bikes in a lot of water crossings, it might be a nice little preventative measure to just go ahead and take this hose and reroute it in some uh, path that you're comfortable with, sending it up under the frame, maybe up here onto the front, top of the frame for that ride. Also make sure that you don't wanna have this thing up where any water that's gonna be coming into it will get sucked into the engine. So that's a situation you wanna avoid. So you wanna do something to just prevent water from getting sucked up, sucked up in there. Now we are coming out with a oil air separator chamber unit that will mount on these bikes and then will prevent any water from, uh, it'll be a vacuum release and so it'll prevent water from being drawn up. It'll also still allow positive crankcase pressures to release. So look for that item coming soon. I just wanted to get this information into your hands as soon as possible so that you were aware of remedies uh, the situation and then remedies to prevent it from happening to you. If you have any suggestions about this or if this has ever happened to you as well, please in the bottom comments let us know about that and we'll be back later on when we come out and release that preventative device to keep this from happening. As far as this engine goes, in my opinion it's toast. I would never buy a bike that had an engine that had eaten sand and essentially ridden the, the on rod here and the crank is complete toast the, 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 the amount of internal damage on this is just extreme so this is very likely a big paperweight there may be somebody out there who would want to take a crack at doing a full rebuild on this the owner is weighing his options you can see sand got sucked in absolutely everywhere total catastrophe hopefully this helps uh, do not let this deter you from going out and getting some adventure